Hey everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to be walking through how to set patterns on a Silent Night SD505-6B standard base. So the way that Silent Night standard bases work is that they are tied to a specific point on your SLC loop. This is done by basically sniffing for data going both inbound and outbound of a detector which is, detect which is connected in parallel to the sound of bass card itself. That sounds confusing, but what it basically means is that you have your SLC in and out on the sound of bass itself, and then you have a pigtail from the sound of bass going to a smoke detector or heat detector. Now, that whatever point that smoke detector is set to is the point which that sound of bass will then be tied to. And it does that to save space and also make programming a little bit more easy. But if you're using sound bases in kind of a weird way, especially for multi pattern applications like what I'm about to show you, it gets a little weird. So I wanted to kind of make a video showing how I'm doing it. Um, just why not? Maybe it'll help somebody. So we have my panel open right now. Um, first, we're going to go to system and we're going to add our devices. So right now I have a test smoke detector, test CO, which will be a monitor module, and then a weather supervisory. So the way this works is let's go to that smoke detector, which is connected to the sound of base, open up its settings. Let's say it's unused. I'm going to select detector. It's a photo detector. And it has an accessory base, which is a sound of base. So when we do that, we will get in the option for a group. So now that sound or basis output is tied only to this group, in this case, group three. And just for reference, we have point three, that was my panel beeping. Uh, we have point three tied as a CO detector input and point four as a supervisory. So now we're gonna go to output groups and program the rest. Okay, so the first step in adding custom uh, patterns and multi patterns to a sound base is to first create a zone for each type of device event. So right now we have zone one, which is file, and that's fine for a smoke detector, but we wanna have a separate zone for our CO and our weather alert, which is our supervisory. We're going to start at zone two and add two zones and then name them. I call one CO and the other one, supervisory weather. So now we go back to system and we assign the zones as needed. Zone two, zone three. So now is the part that gets a little bit confusing. We need to tell the panel that when there is a certain type of event at a certain, by a certain point, it will then make a group do different things. So it's easy to comprehend different groups have different programming, but the same group can have different programming depending on the event type. And when I mean event type, I mean between a file, supervisory, aux input, uh, things like that. So I'm going to go to outputs, a group, group, group outputs. And you see we have group three, which is our sound or bass. And we also, should have mentioned this earlier, we want group one to activate as well. Group one, group one is our NAX, which we'll, which we'll be able to look at later on. And for that, we go to mapping. Now at mapping, it's great because it shows us our zones, our groups, and both of them together. So as we said, group one is file, so we want that to activate NAC1, more well, the NAC, and we want that for now set to Faraday sync. We also want the sound to activate, but we want that at code three, temporal. And you have to repeat that for each device. So in this case, I would have to do the same for detect, detector alarm, water flow, manual pull station, and so on. Now for zone two, which is a contact input, which is CO, we can leave this stuff blank for now, but we also, we want this set 
to be zone to be output three as well. But we also want that to be a different pattern. So we're going to select custom output pattern number two. And if we go to our output patterns, we see number two is code fill, which is standard for uh, CO, detect CO detectors. Next, we want something for the weather uh, alert. So I made this, this crazy pattern down here, which is very, very discernible from everything else. So we're going to do that, which is output fill. Go back to mapping, go to fill. We know it's a supervisory. So under the supervisory uh, cell, we select group three again, change it from constant to output fill. And that's all you have to do. It's a lot of going back and forth between system, input, output, and mapping. But once you get the hang of it, it's, it works out pretty well. So now let's go to the panel and see if it works. Everyone, so we're back at the panel now. The programming has been uh, successfully downloaded to the panel. It will beep when I go into programming, so uh, please excuse that. So it's a little bit of a mess right now, but we have one NAC hooked up, the one that we talked about. This goes out to a fire alarm in this section. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you have to make sure you have one of the available 24 volt outputs set to constant paddle, because that's how the, the base is powered. Um, SLC is just control. So we're gonna go to programming by typing in a uh, six digit code. And we're going to go down to point functions. And I'm going to point functions just so that I can demonstrate these different devices without actually having them connected uh, to the panel. And that's a great feature of the uh, SU protocol on Silent Night. It allows you to test devices that aren't even <laughs> connected. Again, please excuse the beeping, I, I can't make it stop. So we're going to go down to IO point control, internal SLC, and we're going to try the supervisory first because it's the least priority alarm. So this will beep that kind of crazy one. Um, so let's see if it works. Three, two, one. And there we go. So next, we know it, we know that one works. We're gonna try CO, which should be code for repeating. All right. And now, last but not least, we're going to try the only device which is connected which is our photo smoke detector, which will make this uh, smoke det sandal base do code three. Three, and you can actually see the lights go on. Three, two, one. And also we have that other group. Let's just turn that off. And if we remember we set that knack down here to Faraday sync. So now we also have selective silence on this one, so, which is excellent because this is a two wire device. So that's about it for this video, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or uh, would like to see any type of programming be done on a silent night system, please let me know. I'd be, hap I'd be happy to share. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.